Most of English church history is lost in the midst of time. What we do know is predominantly comes from one source, uh, which is a guy named Bede. Uh, we call him the Venerable Bede. He was a monk and the abbot of a monastery uh, in a place called Jarrow. He wrote a book called The Ecclesiastical History of the English People. Um, in that book, he records a lot of information that was transmitted to him from the early church. And what you need to understand about monasteries in this time period is that they served as centers of learning and as centers of the preservation of classical and ancient culture. Uh, the Western Empire had sort of disintegrated by this point, and uh, what was left of it was, was really preserved in these monasteries. Uh, the, the monasteries all had a, a place called a scriptorium. That was where monks would sit and copy out these texts from, from classical antiquity. So, so uh, that was happening in the monastery at Jero, and Bede recorded a lot of that in his Ecclesiastical History of the English People. What we learn from that text is that Christianity first made inroads into the British Isles around the second century when uh, a, a king in the British Isles requested instruction in Christianity from Pope Eleutherius, uh, who was at that time the Bishop of Rome. Thereafter, we learn that the first martyr of the English church was a man named St. Alban. And Alban uh, was executed in 304 during the Diocletian persecution. It was the first kind of uh, universal persecution uh, that happened in the Roman Empire. Uh, and it was right before the reign of Constantine, who made Christianity a legal religion. Uh, but during that time period, a, a, lot of, a lot of Christians apostatized from the faith. Uh, and Alban was one of the first martyrs. Uh, he was a martyr in the, in the, the English church. By 314, which uh, was a moment in which the church was trying to to regather itself and figure out what to do with those who had apostatized from the faith during this persecution, the British church was sufficiently well organized to be able to send three representatives to the Senate of Arles, which is in contemporary France. So that indicates that the church had consolidated and had made serious inroads into the British Isles by that point. So again, this means that, that Christianity is sufficiently well rooted uh, in the British Isles by the fourth century, by the very beginning of the fourth century, that uh, it was a major presence during that time period. What I do want to note, take note of, is that um, Bede tells us that there are both Latin or Roman influences in English Christianity and Irish influences in Christianity. Uh, the Irish monks served as missionaries in, in various parts of the British Isles, and so they transmitted a very Irish form of Christianity um, into, into English, the English faith. There was a strong monastic presence and, uh, and a strong uh, focus on education, during this early phase of English Christianity. Um, and actually, one of the very first European universities was founded in England. That's the University of Oxford. And the University of Cambridge was, was founded a century later. So there's always been a strong kind of educational component to English Christianity. And that remains the case in, and to this day. Uh, the, uh, what we find is that all of these different features of Christianity, the monastic influence, the strong focus on education, um, sort of English and Irish influences, they all remain part of Anglican identity and part of the Anglican tradition. So as we move into the Reformation period, which we're going to have to do now, uh, I'm sorry that I can't go into more detail on this early part, the medieval part of, of English Christianity, but I will put some notes that will accompany the video that you can go and explore further if you want to, if you're, if you're motivated to do so. Uh, but we need to jump now to the Reformation. But what we find in the Reformation period and thereafter is that all of these notes continue to to, to find expression in the Anglican tradition. 